Welcome back. And I couldn't be more pleased to say a special welcome to Eric Metaxas, a good friend, a valued colleague, a number one New York Times bestselling author many times over for Bonhoeffer, Martin Luther, If You Can Keep It, and Amazing Grace, among others, and most recently, Is Atheism Dead? He's the host of the Eric Metaxas Show, a nationally syndicated daily radio program heard on some 300 outlets nationwide. I was privileged to be on it the other day. It also airs on the TBN network on television. Eric, it's so good to have you. Welcome back. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I, I feel honored uh, to be with you, Frank. You're somebody I've uh, respected and admired for a long, long time. If I can add anything to the program, I will be surprised, but that's your business. Well, I'm confident of it, and I'm glad to have you on to test it. I want to start with a problem that we discussed on your program uh, recently and that is just weighing on me, and I think on our audience, a lot of Americans as well, namely the sense that something is seriously wrong in this country and, and certainly in the world. And I wondered if you would address it from the point of view of somebody who's been, you know, both deeply involved in the study of, uh, the chronicling of, and the practice of spiritual faith, and the extent to which spiritual warfare may be part of what is wrong, what is wrong again, both domestically and, and internationally? Well, um, I think we can start where Solzhenitsyn started, and he, he didn't even start there. He got it from old people who had said it. He, he quoted them uh, he, he, when, when they were wondering what had happened, how had these things happened, meaning the Bolshevik Revolution and Stalin, Bolshevik Revolution and Stalin. And old people said that man has forgotten God. That is how all these things have happened. Mm -hmm. And I begin my um, new book, it's called Is Atheism Dead? with that quote, because I think the way things have kind of sifted out uh, historically, recently, we're getting a clearer and clearer divide between those who have forgotten God uh, and, and those who regard God with at least some sincerity, uh, e even if they aren't, you know, the kind of Christian I aspire to be, uh, but, but who, who take the thesis of God, that there is a God uh, and that we are his creatures uh, who take that seriously. So I, I think how we get to where we are today, um, I think in America for most of our history, we took that very seriously. You know, we put in God, we trust on our coins, uh, you know, just about in our, in our lifetimes, not much before you and I came into the world, we, we, uh, it's not something from our distant past, but it's something that has been who we are. You know, Tocqueville was surprised to see it because it's interesting when you think about Tocqueville and you think of France, let's say 240, 50 years ago, there was a secularism, uh, there that was at war with liberty. But in America, from our beginning till today, our liberty has, at least to some extent, come out of our faith in God. The strength of this country uh, has been its churches, uh, has been its places of, of worship. And I think what's happened, let's say since the 60s, um, a lot of these, I wouldn't just say godless, but in some cases, anti-God ideas, ultimately, uh, usually Marxist ideas, uh, now culturally Marxist ideas, have found their way uh, into American culture. Um, and it's a few things are going on, but that's this kind of sifting that's been happening. So when you see tremendous loss of liberty in America, when you think when you, when you and I see things happening in America that you think this may be, uh, this could happen once in a blue moon in Canada or in Norway. Uh, it's happening all around the world in communist countries. But in America, no. Well, these things have been happening. Uh, obviously, COVID has accelerated them. But ultimately, it's it's this kind of a sifting. Uh, one worldview, as I said, regards uh, God as the 
ultimate authority. We look to him. We have, you know, the, or the, the, uh, in the 18th century, they said we have no king but Jesus. So you can govern yourself if you, if you look to a higher power, ultimately, mm-hmm. as the authority. And then you say, well, I, I worry about what he thinks. I will govern myself. If you remove the higher power completely, then someone has to govern us. And that is yes. what's been happening increasingly around the world. But of course, as in we here. see in America as well. Yeah. Let me just inject this point and it's implicit in what you said, but just to tease it out explicitly, it does this come down increasingly, as you see it, to a death struggle between good and evil. Right. And and the good may be imperfect, I think, and we all certainly are, but is there any question in your mind, Eric, that fundamentally the forces of good are under assault across the board? We're going to talk in a moment about Ukraine as a perhaps particular battlefield of the moment, but hardly the only one. Is that what's at foot in this spiritual warfare, as I, you said? I, um, you know... It's interesting because, uh, you know, I'm not just somebody who says I'm a Christian, which means I'm not a Jew or I'm not a Muslim or I'm not an atheist, whatever. But I I take very seriously what what the scriptures say. And I think we're obliged to if you identify as some kind of a Christian, you're you're obliged to follow it all the way through. And what that means is that everything is ultimately spiritual. The spiritual reality is the deeper reality and politics and everything else are are really just manifestations of the deeper spiritual reality. And I think that there are people who would not describe themselves as I would as some kind of an evangelical, people like Tucker Carlson and Naomi Wolf, who suddenly when you solve for X, you say, well, you know what? This, what's happening doesn't make sense unless I look over here. It's, there's something spiritual going on. It's not too strong to use the word evil. Uh, the, 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 um, no, that's true. When you're talking about tyranny, uh, you know, we're not talking about some fun, old fashioned kind of tyranny. We're talking about a wickedness that you saw. I I love that thought. And I want you to freeze the frame. Um, The fun kind of tyranny. um, We're going to come back to whether there's any evidence of that in this world at the moment, um, or whether what we're dealing with is unfortunately the most horrific kind of of tyranny. And that is one that crushes um, spirituality, crushes faith, crushes the people who embrace it. Christians, uh, of course, among them, uh, most horrifically around the world at the moment. We're going to get into all of that and more uh, in the context, particularly of uh, something Tucker Carlson has taken a position on, Ukraine, with Eric Metaxas right after this. 